Um, so our next two speakers are Jamie Nelson and Megan Bard. Jamie is Assistant Director of Emerging Educational Technologies at the Centre for Innovation in Teaching and Learning. He specialises in emerging technologies and playful pedagogies that impact student success. Megan is the Educational Technology Curator at the Centre for Innovation in Teaching and Learning. She introduces all visitors to the innovation spaces and assists them in exploring emerging educational technologies. Thanks to the both of you for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Um, we're from the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign, and if you were about two hours south of Chicago, we are the flagship university of our system. Anyway, okay. Um, so, right, so thank you for the um, introduction. Uh, Megan and I uh, run the innovation studio and VR lab. We're in an old building, so it's kind of funny. We have these glass walls and, you know, we have a lot of technology in this space. Think of it as, as a maker space slash VR lab. Um, but, but yeah, but we're kind of in an older building that maybe isn't so sexy on the outside. We're actually with the Center for Innovation in Teaching and Learning on our campus. So that's a central teaching center. Um, traditionally would help, uh, you know, teaching assistants and faculty, you know, learn new skills and uh, to teach better. But our spaces are aimed not only for class visits and that kind of stuff. Let me get into it here. Um, our space is free um, and easy to use. So there's other maker spaces and other um, VR labs, not too many on campus, but we what we try to pride ourselves in is the access to it. Anybody can walk in. Um, we have activities for you to do uh, that are easy to get involved in and kind of have that. I don't know if it's one on one, but you know that personal touch as well. So that's kind of our niche on campus. We have a set of open hours where anybody can walk in and then other beyond that it's by appointment. Uh, we have individuals coming in, uh, a lot of students, um, some groups, the so local high schools, um, Boy Scouts and you know community groups and that kind of stuff. And then what's been happening right this second is probably more courses, course visits, so classes coming in. And so it's the faculty, students and community. Um, and we want to really do provide kind of that experiential hands on. We want to empower people um, by trying out new technologies. And it's it's kind of fun, you know, because we'll get a, a class group in there and, um, you know, who's done VR, you know, who, who's done 3D printing, who's done laser cutting and all that, and just introducing people uh, to something they might not have ever seen. Uh, just a little bit about our space, and we kind of did this around the VR stuff, but we have 10 gaming computers with Oculus Rift. Uh, Megan and I are also the staff advisors for Alina Esports as well. So when the if people aren't using the computers for VR, they can use it for gaming. Uh, we have five Oculus Quests, uh, two HTC Wireless Vive Pros, a Magic Leap, so that's kind of like HoloLens, that's that mixed reality a set of glasses where you can see the room, but you can also see the overlay content. And then we have a lot of other technologies, robots, drones, laser cutter, 3D scanner, 3D printers, just a bunch of stuff to get people involved with things. And we tend to use uh, commercially available um, hardware and then um, free to use off the shelf applications. That's what we tend to, to go with. Just to just to give you know, because we're from the teaching center, but just to give you a little overall on VR at Illinois, so kind of a campus consortium of people involved in VR and emerging tech. Um, of course, we're the innovation studio. We have VR emerging tech. There's also something in our engineering library uh, basement called the Idea Lab, and they do. It's actually kind of a sister. They do the same kind of things that we do, but it's VR, 3D printing, and scanning, and some other things. Um, our main library does loanable tech, so we don't loan out headsets, but they can loan out headsets. And they also have a, <clears throat> are building a spatial capture studio. And then we have technology services. <clears throat> One of our outgoing um, CIOs <laughs> uh, gave us uh, some seed money for some grants and, and to buy equipment. And so that's what was responsible for all our uh, gaming computers. Um, Computer science, we used to have a VR course, and so 
instructors, you know, would have these great ideas and this was a way to do prototypes. Unfortunately, that, you know, like we've heard throughout the thing, um, the pandemic kind of threw a wrench in that and that's kind of shifted to a gaming course now. And so we're, we're, we lost that support uh, somewhat. Uh, and then we have a VR club and immediately after us, we have one of our student workers who's uh, He'll do a good job, but he's he's part of VR club and he can give you a student perspective of what goes on at the University of Illinois. Um, let me just whip through this. So what do we do with teaching and learning? We have a wide variety of courses vis visiting our spaces. Megan will talk about that in just a second. Um, we try to find, you know, we try to meet with the instructor ahead of time to find experiences that match the syllabus. But sometimes it's just a matter of come in, try out technologies, and then reflect on it. And there are discussions about how could this be used in this, a certain discipline. Typically, people visit the space. You know, if it's a course, about an hour long engagement seems to kind of keep people's attention. Um, of course, we have to do introductions on what to expect, especially with a VR, you know, because it's complicated when you first get in and foreign uh, to people. And then our space, you know, you saw only in houses about 10 VR headsets and we can go a little bit. So if we have larger courses, we tend to split those up or pair students together on a machine. So now Megan's going to talk about courses, projects and engagements. Yes, yeah, so um, we want to give you just some examples on how we use VR teaching for learning. So uh, we have a lot, I think you'll see these next few slides, there's actually quite a wide variety of um, courses and fields of study that come through. So fashion design, uh, we use a program called Open Brush. And basically what it is, is a um, design program where you're, it's a little more creative and artistic than our typical um, design program like Gravity Sketch, which I'll discuss later. It's more about um, drawing in space and um, an artistic point of view. So this fashion design group actually comes in, they, the students are coming in with reference images that they found and collected for inspiration and designing a dress in a VR space, uh, which is really fantastic because they can definitely use their imagination. They don't have to use typical fabrics that you'd find um, in the real world. They can use sparkles and snow and rainbow and fire and all these interesting elements. Um, and then the uh, review of the dresses are actually also done in a virtual setting. And next we have physics using the Spears program, which is a great program. It's more of a um, sit and click experience, but basically it introduces students to the uh, basic theories of uh, uh, relative uh, you know, gravity and everything. So you have uh, the student in particular is about in the point in the experience where they're going to look into the heart of um, a dying star. So it's a great way to introduce a very complex theory like um, general relativity to uh, students that are just entering the program. And next we have business. So the Geese College of Business is actually, their building is just across the street from ours. So we do a fair amount of work with them. And we have uh, students from all different fields of study within the College of Business come to uh, explore technologies in our space. Um, so you'll have accountancy. Uh, this group is actually a um, group called the Illinois Business Council, which is a group of students that are, it's, it's basically like kind of a larger um, club and organization with on campus. Um, and this group of students will come once a semester and um, check out all the different technologies that we have. And this is one of those instances that Jamie mentioned earlier, where it's about general exploration and um, sparking inspiration, because you never know when the next entrepreneur is going to stop in and see a VR game or a program and think, oh my gosh, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to um, develop. And then here's that gravity sketch program I mentioned before. Um, Industrial Design 101 is a freshman level course. And uh, so students are actually um, throughout this course trying a bunch of different techniques for design. Um, in this particular instance, they come to our space and use gravity sketch to design a table or a workspace. And then they're actually exporting that for review by the professor after their experience is finished. And then they also submit a story based around their table or space, um, which I think is a really great way to kind of help students think through the process a little bit differently of design, not just I'm making something normal and functional. But once again, because it's in that VR space, they can make something extremely exceptional that they might not normally be able to put together in the real world, especially as a freshman level course. 
We also, like Jamie mentioned, we do a lot of outreach. Um, sometimes that's on campus, sometimes that's off campus. This is actually a group from a local high school that came in. Um, the class was a computer literacy course, and I believe this was also freshman and sophomore, so a younger group. Um, that student's actually participating in a, uh, a program called Kitty Rescue, which is a great example that we use for um, people who are new to VR. Uh, you have to go out onto a plank, which is on a very, very, very tall skyscraper, and basically rescue a cat from the edge of this plank. Um, it gives the user a really good idea of how your brain uh, will kind of take over you'll you know the physical experience you'll know your body your feet they know that you're not going to fall off the <laughs> the peak of this building but you still get vertigo and the wobblies a little bit so this is actually one of the custom apps that we do have on campus with VR archaeology um, as you can see it's actually a really cool program where you'll have students um, just um, like the speaker from Penn State mentioned, uh, you know, sometimes you can't go to the archaeology site. So uh, this program actually brings the site to them, which was it's a very, very popular course that fills up pretty much um, every semester. <laughs> Architecture, uh, students came in and used VR to survey a site using Google Earth once again, um, bringing the space and the physical world to the students here. So they were able to go and survey a empty parking lot. And then after that, um, talk about the different design elements that they might um, use when putting a building there in the future. Social work, uh, a lot of the times we have these programs come in and they're looking for different programs that are um, going to highlight empathy, um, putting you in the shoes you know, of someone else. So Traveling While Black is an excellent, excellent program. Um, we find that it has many uses across a lot of different fields of study. And we do have a couple other programs of empathy as well, even one where um, you're having to unfortunately uh, fire someone in an HR setting who is an um, older gentleman and is, it does not go well. So <laughs> you're trying to empathize and control your own emotions in that situation. Um, but yeah, a lot of social workers actually will come through and um, use these programs with us. And then also, as Jamie mentioned, we do have eSports for the academic advisors. That's someone um, using Beat Saber, which is a uh, VR game. And that's a very skilled, very fast paced user right there. Um, we do also have people come in and just play this for fun. But uh, eSports will also uh, play you know, on the gaming computers and just do their regular um, comp competition games that they have. But we also do have social gaming as well that comes into our space. OK, so just all wrap up here. What, what's the future? What are we looking at uh, as we go on? Um, there's growing interest in these spaces, and so we, we grow, you know, we have repeat customers, but then we have new customers uh, coming in all the time. Uh, staffing is, is, is an issue. Um, currently, our open hours are only one day a week, although we come in for appointments. Um, what's going on with mixed reality glasses? Everybody's kind of, you know, implying that uh, mixed reality is what's going to be the future, but we're not quite there yet waiting for Apple to come up with something or one of the big names to, to lower the cost. Um, we lost, I had mentioned, we lost our cons, uh, computer science kind of VR development pipeline. Uh, so we struggle with that a little bit on, on custom making applications. Um, and so now what we're kind of doing just to be realistic is working with faculty to, to come up with proposals uh, uh, to, to, to then sell it to a, you know, to a, a like a national forum, we need an international forum. I, I like the, your your group there. That's that's funded a lot of cool stuff. We need to find that kind of thing here in the states. Um, and then of course the metaverse. Um, you know, Teams, Microsoft Teams is you know I will get avatars first, and then there'll be some metaverse pieces. Um, but then we have all that NFT land, and I won't get into all that. But how do we kind of pull? move education into the metaverse? How can we jump in and say, today we're going to the pyramids. Now we're going here and there, um, that kind of stuff. And of course, funding and partnerships, um, we would love to get more of that. I mentioned that a second ago. The, the sad reality is all of our headsets, they still work, it's great, it provides people experience, but they're all obsolete, they're not, they're, they don't sell them anymore. Um, so, you know, kind of uh, forming partnerships would be great. So thank you very much. There's our contact information and um, will or at least I'll be around for the QA session.
Thanks, Jamie and Megan. That was a fantastic talk. Um, I really loved the broad range of examples that you guys showed and how they spanned a number of disciplines. And I think there was a lot of interesting um, considerations when you were talking about the future of VR, which hopefully we'll be able to cover in the panel.